Hey everybody, it's Dave Duford here at DavidDuford.com where I help insurance agents like you become top producing insurance professionals. And today continues a multi-part series that I'm doing with uh, agents who are detailing their first year or year or two in the insurance business, all with the goal of giving you, who probably are new to the insurance business too, some perspective on how they were able to see success early on in their career. So today I am interviewing uh, Mr. Tyler Farrington. Say hello, Tyler. What's up, everybody? Uh, Tyler's been so gracious to take time out of his busy day to set aside just to uh, talk about his journey into the insurance world and share with you guys out there how he's been successful. So Tyler, if you don't mind, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself as far as your background, how you got started and got into the insurance business. Yeah, so I am 26 years old. Uh, I kind of got into the insurance business because I had a void in my life I was looking to fill. I had a background in commercial fishing. So I oh, wow. worked for lobster, urchins, clams, hairy wrinkles, little snails on the rocks. I've, I've done it all, most cool. of it on the ocean. So I, I came from more of a physical labor background type thing. And it kind of all got started for me when I was tending a group of sea urchin divers in the dead of winter, right? You, you can imagine what it's like out on the ocean when it's zero degrees out. Where uh, Were you like up in Alaska? No, coast of Maine. That's where I live is Maine. About as bad. <laughs> in, the, in the middle of winter it is. I, I used to live up in Boston, so yeah, I kind of remember those snowy yeah. winters. Yeah, so I, it was kind of like at that moment when I realized I kind of had this void in my life that, that needed to be filled. You know, it was one thing if it's cold, but it paid crappy too. So it was one of those things I just used to, to pass the seasons. Sure. Off. Yeah. So did you, like when you say void, did you, do you mean like what you were doing was pointless or you didn't want to see, couldn't see yourself doing this in 10 years? I mean, kind of explain what you mean. That particular industry, yes, it's a dying industry on the ocean up here. So it's like I was getting a fixed rate. Some people would call it good. I, I didn't really call it that good. But it was like the state of Maine's not going to give me a license that I can dive for these things on my own. Uh, they're not going to let me uh, go out and get a boat so I can have my own divers. So it was kind of like, well, I can sit here and I can wait around or I can go out and chase something that I can find on my own. So you, you got this point in your career or life where you thought, I can't do this forever. Yeah. Why insurance? How did you get attracted to insurance? So commercial fishing is, I don't, I don't dare shout a number out to you, but it's high up on the most dangerous jobs right. in the world, not in the country, in the world. So at the age of 19, you know, I, I commercial fished for ages, but at the age of 19, when I was out on my own, I was graduated from school. I quickly realized I better have a life insurance policy if I'm going to carry through with this kind of work. So it, it attracted me to getting into life insurance because there was a lack of education where I live. And where I saw, you know, like I said, I had a void in my life with that particular part of the season that I was working in. I also saw a void in my life where I could kind of do something for others. And I think where there's a need and where there's not a lot of competition, you know, maybe somebody could thrive. So did you arrive at a life insurance career because somebody told you about it? Or did you go get your license first and then figure out where you were going to go from there? That's a pretty good question. I got my license first and figured out where I was going to go from there. So I, I worked manual labor my whole life. So I knew I've always been all right with people. So I knew that I could probably do something sales related. I didn't know life insurance itself would be so sales oriented, but as you know, it very much is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So Tell us about the agency you selected. How did you go from, yay, I've got my license, now what, to actually working uh, with an agency and, and choosing the product that you ultimately decided upon? Okay. So I chose the agency that I worked with. I was talking with several of them, right? There's tons of them everywhere. And I ended up getting contracted with the Raider Agency out of West Hartford, Connecticut. 
uh, Ben Raider, the owner, and I carried on a conversation, and, and we just clicked. And it only seemed natural that I go with somebody that my natural instinct went with. You know, he's been a mentor of mine since then. Uh, he's very successful. Um, he's self-made. So that's kind of how, how I judge it. I had conversations with several, you know, several owners and several agencies, but with Ben, it just seemed to, to come natural, and he still puts a lot of time into me to this day. Yeah, that's good. You know, one thing I tell tell agents all the time, I think, you know, working and again, our audience watching right now are people who are relatively new or reading the book version of this. They're new to the insurance business and and it's kind of a unique business in itself. Like you would think that the brand name of the company matters. I would argue it comes down to who your direct upline is, who your direct manager is. Yeah. You know, they're going to have a lot more impact on your day-to-day -day capability in the business than some upper-level VP does that has no direct connect. Did you find that was the case with you and, and your mentor? Uh, I mean, he, put, he puts a lot of time into me every day. I call the phone, he answers. He works a very tight schedule, right? So he's going all the time. He's not like, you know, somebody who just sets back and waits for things to happen. He goes out not just with his agents, but he still goes out in the field himself. So he's not the type to just sit back and wait for things to happen. He makes them happen. And uh, I really admire that, you know, not just in an order of it in an agency, but from a work ethic standpoint altogether. So, so based on that, this experience you've had with your mentor so far, kind of describe, if you will, again, thinking of our audience, the new people who don't know much of anything, maybe they've not even picked an agency to work with. What are the top three most important things that you feel Ben and, and the organization you're involved with have delivered as far as training goes? You know, again, to kind of help these people watching or reading figure out which agency is going to be best for them. I know I mentioned it before, but it's going to be time. It's going to be countless hours on the phone. Um, it's going to be with the willingness to just step away from your, you know, from your wife and kids at dinner and answer a question that maybe you have while you're out in the field. Because a lot of agents, they just kind of get thrown into this thing, right? You know, there's a lot of them that just kind of go out in the field and just kind of learn as they go. So I had day training with my upline. Um, I had about a day or two with him before I was thrown to the wolves on my own, so to speak. But still, you know, for the first 90 or so days, I found myself calling a lot. Hey, what's this medication for? Hey, what's this situation? What's this carrier going to be better used for? So I think like if for a prospective agent that is looking for a good agency to work with, gauge them by the questions that, the questions that they're answering for you. I mean, see how open they are because they're going to have to work with you after you put pen to paper and decide the contract with that particular agency. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I, and the reason I, I just wanted you to, to kind of detail that is because it is so important as a new agent to pick the proper agency and, and the proper person to work with. It's, it's really more of like a partnership it is. than it is like an employee-employer relationship. And you have to look at the person you're working with as a joint venture uh, person in your business operation. And that means you've really got to scrutinize them as much as they scrutinize you. Cause if it doesn't pass the smell test for you, it's probably not a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you, what exactly do you sell? Final expense. Okay. So you're in the final expense market. Wonderful. Final expense is the most, as you know, the most vulnerable market in the insurance agency, you know, in the insurance world between the ages of 50 and 85, in my opinion, that's when people think of life insurance. I'm not saying that there isn't money in selling to younger individuals with like term life and fully participating whole life and things like that, but that's when people think of it. So it's, it's probably the most popular product out there in the insurance world at the moment, arguably. So for me, final expense, I didn't really find it. It kind of found me. I thought maybe I'd be dealing with, uh, you know, more younger people, people with families, mortgage protection, which I do all that. But the biggest chunk of my business, 75% of what I do, final expense. 
why don't you describe your first 90 days in the business for us? Like, like again, thinking of our audience, they've maybe never worked with an agency. What was it like jumping in? You talked about training, ride-alongs. What was it like working with your trainer? What was it like working with clients? You know, how successful were you right off the bat? Right off the bat, I mean, I wrote 1,200 in premium without really any kind of training but before I even had my day out in the field. It, it was a friend of mine. I mean, of course, we, we we will find things, cold market as we get in, friends, family, things like that. But working with my particular upline, it was like I didn't know you would be in the mix that much dealing with people, going in and out of homes. You know, we deal with a lot of people we we don't even we don't even know. You know, they're being marketed to by direct mail or Facebook leads or however that that we're marketing them, but you really don't know what you're getting into before you're there. So like working with my upline, it it was just an interesting process from door knocking to setting appointments, et cetera. Did you get success? I mean, do you feel like, I guess part of the question is, you know, there's ups and downs in this business, right? You know, in the insurance business, you're, most of us are on straight commission. You eat what you kill. Um, if you had rough months, have, has it all been smooth sailing? I mean, especially in that first year, what was your experience? So, yeah, the, the first 90 days, it was rough. You're going to have, you know, to an agent that hasn't experienced it, you're going to have a lot of moments, I think, in that first year, not just the first 90 days where you're actually questioning what you're doing. Uh, I remember it was my first time out on my own. I was hours away from home. I was way down on this backwoods road. I didn't really know where I was. I was following the GPS. And I come across this guy. He filled out a direct mail lead. This guy's building his own castle in his basement as I pull up into his driveway to do a door knock. Oh, he's, he's building his own casket. He's building his own casket. Oh, so cool. He's had the subject on his mind for a while. He was a little, a little cuckoo. He had random people's obituaries cut out on his kitchen table and everything. I, I got out of that one. I didn't even present to that one. I just basically said, hey, I got to go get something. I got out of there. He was, he was crazy. So it was like that moment in particular, I, like I felt it in my stomach. I was a little, I was a little homesick. I was away from home. I was staying in a hotel room that night. And it's like, man, what am I going to do? So, I mean, yeah, you're, you're going to question it. But, but the biggest thing is, and I'm not saying that it's for everybody, and that's part of the reason why you're doing this, correct, Dave? Because there is such turnover in this business that maybe somebody needs to realize what they're getting into before they do. But I think it's, you know, it's harder to, to talk about and to teach without somebody actually being in it. Yeah, this business is deceptively complex. You know, there's, it's a simple business, but it's not easy, you know, and, 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 and it's very hard for most people to do this alone. Because if you've never run your own business, if you've never been in a position to where it all depends on you, that's what happens when you get in the insurance business. The buck stops with you. Nobody's going to babysit you uh, to go prospect. Nobody's going to really show much care at all. You know, you've got to take the reins and manage yourself, manage your time and manage your training, you know, and that's like you said, that's why I do the videos. Cause there's just such a lack of that in this business, unfortunately. Um, bring me back to your first final expense presentation. I know you, let's not talk about the cold or the warm market you sold. I'm, I'm curious to see what was your experience on that first final expense lead that came back? Did you sell it? What was it like? Did you stumble across what kind of detail for me? So there's a couple different ways to answer that question. The first one was basically me and my upline went out in the field that day. We saved the last presentation for me. We did several other presentations at the beginning of the day. And basically saved the last one for me. And I walked in and, you know, we, we built rapport. But after that, I mean, it was kind of like both the client and myself were giving each other that deer in the headlight look. And... <laughs> And my upline is kind of filling in the blanks, you know, picking me up where I fall down. Uh, we sold it. It was a $29 Transamerica application. I can't really remember what the face amount was for. But, uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we got it done. Yeah, and that's what's great. Again, you know, if you, if you got training and you got somebody in your corner, you know, you can see you follow the process. You can see success right away. I don't think. I mean, I, you know, you feel, feel free to comment, Tyler. I don't think you need to 
invest, you know, six months of your career or six months of your life before you see if you're successful. I think, are you going to have ups and downs? Sure. But you should, if you got what it takes, what do you think? Don't you think you should see some pretty good results? You shouldn't, you see results of some kind in the first month to, to tell you if this is right for you or not. Yeah, I mean, we're we're in the day and the age where we're being advanced 75% or nine months of our business up front as a new agent. So it's like you, from a cash flow standpoint, you should be beginning the cash flow, I think, in month one, month two, depending on the carrier that you're with. There, there's a lot of carriers that will pay you the next day after your business places. So it's like you didn't even have to wait for the first draft day uh, to be cash flow. I mean, me personally, I come from a background where I've always been self I've always worked for myself. I've never really punched a time clock. So the fact of me getting myself out the door and dealing with the people and being an eat what you kill business, that didn't really bother me. And I think that's where a lot of a lot of the newer agents run into hiccups because I think they find, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think they find their way to life insurance sometimes by asking. Right. right. They're abused in one part of their life uh, in the workplace. It could be uh, on a used car dealership. It could be stocking shelves at a grocery store. They come across somebody who earns their living at life insurance. They get recruited and they think that it'll, it'll be just as easy as that. And, and it's definitely not. So those people like that, they work a nine to five job. And they are told what time to go in. They're told what time to leave with this business. There isn't any of that. So there is the freedom aspect of it. A lot of people, a lot of agents get sold on the freedom aspect of it. And they, they abuse the freedom aspect of it. Because yeah, remember. being told when to go into work, when to you know, go home and stuff like that. Whoops. Yeah, so as the old saying goes, with freedom comes responsibility, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, freedom is, is a weird word in the sense that, yeah, you can do nothing, but you're not going to get anything either. You know, you like, and that's something really important for you guys that are coming into this. Maybe you got recruited, like Tyler said, through recruiting opportunity. It's not that you can't be successful with those organizations. You just have to know what it takes to be successful. And, and most of the time, more than you probably imagine, it comes down to you. It comes down to you performing. It comes down to seeing the people. It comes down to running the system you're taught. If you shortchange that or if you don't apply full 100% effort, it's likely you're going to fail. Again, the, the, the dropout rate in this business is 90% plus, I think, in the first year. So, you know, you got, you, it's all on you. It's completely your responsibility. And embrace that. So I think that's really the only, you know, it's the only way there is in this business. Um, how much business did you do in your first year? I don't think we mentioned that earlier, Tyler. So I got my contracting done with the agency that I am with now in April or May of 2017. So okay. really late into the year, I think I ended up doing 80 some odd thousand dollars worth of business okay. in, that, in that partial year. Last year was my first full year in the business. I did just shy of 180. A hundred and what now? 180. Right, excellent job. man. So that's 15,000 a month. I mean, that's absolutely great. Yeah, and definitely top 10% or better in this business for sure. So, so what, what do you think you did that differentiated you from the vast majority of people that failed? How can a new agent duplicate what you've done as far as your capability to achieve the kind of success that you did? I am a firm believer in the, large law of, in the law of large numbers. The numbers are going to take care of themselves. However, you have to do your part to just leave your house you have to go out and see the people you've got to see your leads and for me for me especially when i was newer i was worried about my leads getting stale i was just worried about them getting aged so i was seeing them as quick as possible and that's still kind of you know a little bit about what i do today but you've got to leave your house you are going to write the business by accident just by accident if you leave your house but the people that that need insurance you know they're not going to come on you know, to your house and knock on, you know, knock at your door. I find that if I am just out, sometimes I'll, I'll give you an example. I was driving down a street the other day. I was going to do a door knock and I was working on Facebook lead and this woman put the street ad in the street she was on, but she didn't put the number. 
Well, it just so happened I had a client that lived on that street. So I kind of went up and down the road and finally circled back around. And I pulled into my client's house and I said, hey, do you know such and such? And she says, yeah, I do. She lives at this number here. And it just so happened she had company there. I looked over and I said, you guys got life insurance? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I wrote almost $1,000 in premium by accident. Right. I have countless stories like that. So even though I didn't have a lead to go see those people that day, I wrote the business anyway, all because I was out. So whether you're new or not, you know, I know veteran agents that struggle with just leaving the house. And to me, that's where it all lies. You've got to be out putting the work in. Yeah, it's, it's so weird. It's like, I ask this of all my people I talk to, especially long-term successful agents too. And it always comes down to fundamentals, right? It's, you got to work consistently. And you would think, I'm sure there's people who are like, well, duh, you got to go to work. But the thing in this business, that's a performance art. You know, it's, it's like athlete, it's like athletics. It's like a sport. You know, it's all about making things happen. And you have to consistently apply yourself to do so. And you would be shocked. I mean, I know recruiting agents, how many of them shortchange the work ethic, the, the work ethic, the go show up and, and, and go to work ethic. You know, they just, people really struggle to some extent, especially after getting rejected, having a rough week to get themselves out of the house, to just go do the basics, to just go see the people anyway, even if they have a rough week. So it's so simple, I mean, but so hard, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it, it always comes down to that too. It's just the, the simple stuff, you know, for sure. So for, for those agents who are new and they're writing business now, but let's, let's say they're struggling, maybe they're, they're doing the work or they feel like it and they're not getting the results they want. What advice would you give them? How could you help them out as far as how to turn the ship or write the ship as they say? So for me, it's like, I'm going to change whatever it is I'm doing. If I'm dialing, I'm going to door knock. If I'm door knocking, I'm going to dial. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to buy more leads. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to work my referrals harder. I'm going to do more annual reviews. I'm going to try to add more coverage to the people that I already have on the books. Or you can rewrite the business just by accident as long as you are seeing somebody. But uh, law of large numbers, you, you've got to be out there. I just went through uh, two weeks ago. I worked four days in the field, wrote two thousand dollars worth of business and half of it was guarantee issue business right the commission is garbage on that so you know it wasn't a super successful week for me but i bounced back the week after i had a good week the week previous to that i think a lot of it it's kind of up to you yeah yeah you just gotta be able to push through you know i know much much easier said than done but <laughs> that's just it I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, uh, I have uh, a downline. And like you said, you know, this, this can be a lonely business. You can get lone wolf syndrome. But even though you're dealing with people all day, you, you uh, have a lot of time to yourself, to think, to talk to yourself, listen to radio, audio books, whatever you're into. Sometimes I will grab my downline and we will go out door knocking together. And we will split whatever business we write. And I tell you what that does, it breaks the monotony. Right. Every right. day is not the same anymore. So for those of you that maybe, you know, you are recruiting or you aren't recruiting, you don't have a downline underneath you, ask to go out with your upline for a day. Just, just break the scene up. We, we, we learn something every day about each other that we go out and do. It gives you somebody to talk to in the car, too. Right. Right. No, it's, it's, it's funny. You mentioned earlier, it's people say there's competition in this business and I guess there is, but I think worse than the external competition is the internal competition. It's, it's you against yourself. And I think that's what comes down to is, is internal mastery with internal mastery comes external mastery. You know, if you can master yourself, your emotions, your, your whims, you'll find that you'll do a lot better in this business. You know, cause most people struggle with that on some level. So, um, last question here, Tyler, thank you so much for your time. What are your long-term aspirations as business? You've been doing this. You obviously sound like you're building the team. Where do you want to be in five to 10 years? What are you, where are your, what's your next big goal? 
So for me, it's it's kind of like, yeah, I, I pull a lot of money a year in the average American, you know, regardless of what kind of, you know, work background they come from, they just, they, they, they take that and they spend it or they keep it in the bank. For me, it kind of comes down for making my money work for me instead of me working for my money. So I basically take my earnings, I invest in real estate. I invest in dividend producing stocks. So for me, it's like, I want to be in this thing to be financially good. Um, quarter million dollars a year um, would be realistic, you know, for a, a top producing agent. That's kind of where I want to be to be able to do that, like clockwork year after year after year, but to also have my investments working behind. So right. it's like, I know that's a little off the subject, of insurance, but I think it's important to kind of make the money work for you. That way, you're not going to get burned out on insurance as much. Especially yeah. if you have years underneath your belt. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're successful at that. Point. One thing I tell agents too, and, and this is a realization I've had just growing an agency myself, is that you know the insurance business is one of the few that will offer, if not fully passive, semi-passive streams of income as long as you sell the right kind of products or build an agency. And I think we all should be thinking towards that direction because there may be a day, you know, I made this decision when I was 30 or 29, you know, that I might not want to be out in the field six days a week doing the grind with final expense. And I can train other people to duplicate my skill set and, and, and profit in a small way, but have scalability to it so that I can spend more time with family and at least disconnect my earnings from my activity. And, uh, and yeah, I think however you go about accomplishing that is great. I mean, obviously what you're doing is in, in, in the vein, the same strategy, which is creating other streams of income, which is so that, you know, if you have a bad year or something happens or you get hurt and you can't work, you've got other sources to help you flow through things. You know, I think that's a, something we as insurance agents can do because of how high the first year commission is and, and the opportunities for products that do build a passive income. So, um, Tyler, thank you so much for your time today. I really enjoyed this. If you guys, um, it, well, one last thing. Um, who, where can we find out more about? You got a website? You got anything you'd like to promote here? More than welcome to look me up on Facebook, uh, Instagram. I believe it's Tyler Nine C. Um, I don't really have a website. My my reef business has a website. That's one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, you need a holiday reef, <laughs> holiday season, look us up, MachiasBayReef.com. Okay. Um, Facebook, Tyler Farrington, and uh, Instagram would be all lowercase, Tyler9C. All right, Tyler. Well, hey, man, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed this, and uh, hope you have a good one, man. See you later, Dave. Thank you. Bye-bye.